Up next, a man who just got promoted to director of player development on the team that drafted him first overall back in the day in 2002. He played over 1,000 games in the NHL, scored 437 goals, over 800 points, won the Rocket Richard in 2004 with that 41-goal season. Gold in Vancouver 2010, shutting down Alexander Ovechkin. Gold in Sochi 2014 on a very defensive but effective Mike Babcock run team. We welcome to the just turned 37 year old former NHL forward Rick Nash to the program. How are you, Rick? What's happening? I'm doing well. How are you guys? We're good. We're good. So, promoted to director of player development. What exactly does it mean? For those who don't know, what what were you doing and what does uh, your day to day operations involve now, Rick? Yeah, well, it's just changed a bit into the uh, development side and, and taking over that uh, position will be a lot of work with our prospects. And obviously we have nine draft picks coming up uh, this draft, so it's going to uh, be a busy time and try to get these guys to uh, be the best professional athletes that they can be and try to uh, edge out a roadmap for them to have success. Rick, what have you learned from your coaches? And I know we played together with Torts in New York. Uh, but some of the things that they keep drilling into your preparation, either it is off ice, on ice, like any things that you focus on when you talk about younger players, draft pick, college guys, when it comes to development? Yeah, you know what, Martin, just taking over this role, um, I've thought about that and a lot of the coaches that, that I've had. And I'm sure you as a goalie will love to hear this one. And I think it's true that, for you know, players to have success, I feel like they really have to buy in in the defensive zone first. Um, so much can come from uh, playing good defense, and once you learn how to check and learn how to play defense, then the offense will come and your uh, your natural skills will take over. So you know, just having this job for a few days, I, I've already started trying to think uh, of ways I can help these kids uh, become professionals. Are you going to show them some clips when you shut down Ovechkin in that? Uh first period blowout that eventually led to the quarterfinal win that Cam Neely predicted. Uh, Rick, uh, are you allowed to use Olympic footage and show them, hey, this is me shutting down Ovi. This is what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's it's funny. You know, every time we, we showed up at one of those tournaments, it was, it was check your ego at the door. It doesn't matter if you're a goal scorer, power play guy, penalty kill guy. You got to do whatever, whatever best for the team. And, and I feel like you have to use that with NHL clubs, too. You have to buy into whatever it takes to uh, to win games. Rick, does it work when you talk to kids now? And you're not. You're 37 years old. You're still young. Then you could probably still play, you know, and 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 teach these kids a lesson. But does it work when you say, "Hey, this is what I did," or "This is how we did it"? Like, uh, you know, this is what this coach used to tell me. Does it work? Do they understand when you bring personal experiences like that? Well, I, I think it's a, a fine line, just because. Um, you know when you sometimes get around the older guys and they talk about the old days and how it used to be and you know some younger kids might say the game has changed and this and that so you have to walk that fine line at the same time when when you say that i think they appreciate that you've you know you've walked in those boots and you've you've had those experiences uh at the highest level possible so i think it's important that you share your experiences but at the same time you kind of look at their their path and figure out what their roadmap is and, and help them with that and the games evolved too from when I first started and from when you played. It, it, it's a different game, so you kind of have to evolve with the time and, and with uh, the style of play. Well, yeah, at 37, that's very young. You're starting career number two, uh, or already have uh, with the organization, but you're promoted. Uh, Marty would laugh at this, but Rick, for me, I'd have a hat that said 437, the two Olympic gold medals around my neck, and bling bling on my arms to the kids saying, what? look at this stuff i mean that's me you're more modest and and the way the game has changed in terms of player development i mean i first saw mcdavid uh mike johnson and i called the the minor bantam game at 15 mcdavid was in it and barzell was in it they're playing against each other uh, which was amazing mcdavid was attacking triangles and doing things and mike johnson said he's 15 he's better than me he's better than i ever was like I, i i can't do that stuff i saw these guys doing it now were you doing that in london or when you got to the nhl 
and and where are we on the belfry you know you've seen the the try like mcdavid knows when he's got the puck it's d to me i'm in attack the winger triangle take the defenseman wide and he's going short side shelf or low stick like is that how intricate you're getting into as we're doing this stuff because in that regard yes the game has changed very quickly right well yeah it's um you know what it, it's uh it, it's a lot of a lot of different things going on in, in the game, and especially in his game. He's obviously a generational player, so he's uh, you know he's a special one that doesn't come along too often. But um, you know what? Is you you have to try to get them to uh, to understand that they have to keep getting better. And you know, you, I got a chance to play with someone like Sidney Crosby, and you know, you still talk to guys around the Pittsburgh organization, and he's still the first one on the ice, still the last one off, still trying to get better. So if Sidney Crosby's doing it and Connor McDavid's doing it, then I feel like every pro should be trying to uh, trying to get better. And, and as for you know what I've accomplished in my career, I, I guess I can't be modest at some points, and that's that's how I, I handle myself. But if it doesn't work, I'm going to be coming back to you for some tips. <laughs> Cools has got plenty of tips. Don't worry, he's got an opinion on things, and we love it. But uh, Nasher, I, I love giving fans. Uh, a, a look into the locker room and what it feels like. So I'm going to tell a story and I want you to finish the story because in the 2012-13 season, you know, it's a lockout shortened season. We show up in camp in January. Torts used to run a tight camp, but we only had a week. We start the first two, three weeks of the season and guys are tired. And Torts came into the room and started giving us the speech how Fatigue is a state of mind, right? Like you can make yourself fatigued, but if you tell yourself you're not fatigued, you're going to be energized and fatigue is only a state of mind. And then he walked to you. You were sitting next to me in the locker room and he asked you how you were doing and you've never been shy to speak up your mind. Do you remember what you told Torts at that moment? Because I sure do. Did I tell him I'm not tired? No, you told him the other way. You're like, I'm gassed. I'm gassed. Like yeah. he said, he said, Nasser, how you doing? You're like, I'm super gassed, Torts. I'm gassed. And it was so funny because you just, he just went on 20 uh, minutes telling a story and you can, you just uh, went your own way. But, but that's what I loved about you is that you weren't afraid to speak yeah. your truth. And, and so, I mean, I'm sure you heard Torts tell the guys that all the time, right? You know what's funny, Marty, is that it, that conversation that you just expressed that, um, you know, being tired is a, is a state of mind. And, uh, we, you know, we, we still talk about that and we still use that saying because it's one of Torch's uh, best ones. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, Torch is one of the best coaches in the history of hockey and he has all those sayings. But, you know, you should kind of speak your mind. Sometimes going through one of his training camps, uh, I'm not going to lie, Tired becomes a little more than just a state of mind. <laughs> That's great. I want to be a fly on the wall during that conversation. I'm going to ask you in a, in a bit uh, about Marty as a teammate. What was he like? Uh, you know, did he like slippers, soft towels, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So be ready with a great Marty story uh, before we, we finish. Uh, Columbus, you grew up there. You went there as a teenager, uh, as so many first overall picks do. Uh, and we're there and had a tremendous amount of success. Uh, the cobblestone, the rink, uh, it's not for everybody. People have left. Now we've got the Seth Jones situation. What do you say about, and I don't want to use the word turmoil, that's too strong. Is it about getting people now who just want us be in Columbus? Uh, what do you say about the organization and community that maybe others outside Rick do not know? Yeah, it's a it's a good question, and it's it's honestly a tough one to answer. We've had a lot of meetings internally on on how to figure out how to figure out this little issue. Um, in twenty years, in twenty years, we have uh, seventeen guys alumni that are living uh, in town now, and only five of those guys finished their career with uh, with the Blue Jackets. So, you know, there's something to be said for that. That uh, you know, guys with family love it here, and. And, you know, for, for younger guys, there's a lot to do. we got Ohio State campus right downtown. So, you know, I, I never had an issue with the city, and I think a lot of guys haven't either. But in saying that, obviously, the, we, we've kind of got that mold around our uh, our team. And, and, I, and I truly believe it starts where, where my job starts now in development. 